Holy crap, what am I watching? This is like better than any action movie, war movie, or actual combat footage that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, the trailer for this was amazing. I cannot watch, I cannot wait to watch the entire full film. I guess this was the, a combine, a combination of the Raid miniseries. And here's another crazy fun fact. I've never played Escape from Tarkov, so we're about to get into this full film. I have no idea who the characters are, what the story is, who the units are. All I know is that you got two factions kind of fighting each other and, and possibly a third party called the Scabs that are also kind of fighting. I'm not sure who's on whose side or what the objective is, but we're about to get into this. Stick around. So obviously Russian guys, AKs, old school EOTechs, hodgepodge lasers and furniture and accessories. I like it, nice camo jobs. Little mesh camo. Classic hangar base scene. Love it. This is what we call battlefield recovery, battlefield acquisition. This kind of stuff happens a lot in war. People come, they loot dead bodies, they scavenge for more ammo, food, weapons, any kind of thing that, you know, they could maybe sell on the black market and maybe get some food. In this case, they also loot MREs. What is that? Is that a first strike? Is that a first strike bar? Uh oh. Oh. My man got shot in the chest. Oh, he shot that dude next to him. That was like brain matter everywhere. Nothing wrong with some battlefield recovery. Nothing wrong with like looting and scavenging dead bodies in a combat zone. I mean, it happens. It happens. We don't do it as American soldiers or, you know, most organized militaries don't really do it. But a lot of the local civilian population will because, again, it's not like they're trying to fight us. They just, they, they'll take it and sell it on the black market. In this guy's case... I would have probably took that bag and got back to cover because you're kind of just sitting out in the open like a sitting duck. And then he got shot. Okay, so it looks like they got snipers on the perimeter. I don't know if the sniper's looking at that guy or not. Uh, otherwise, he could have took that shot. Oh, this guy's alive? Just like came back to life? So these guys are bare okay that dude got like a 40 round banana clip in his ak that's cool and his ak is like a shorty it's like maybe 10 inches this kind of like shooting through walls is such hollywood you know theatrics um i mean people who shoot through walls like this I, I get it, but as a professional unit, you're not going to shoot back through the walls. You're not going to shoot back at the enemy through the walls because you're not going to waste ammo. You're better trained than that. And you know that you're probably not going to hit anybody because they're probably not there anymore. So a little, little Hollywood-ish, but let's keep going. Yeah, how come the snipers didn't like see, say anything to these guys? Were the snipers not providing overwatch for these guys? Like, Did they not see that these guys were, you know, that they there's there's enemy or whatever closing distance on them? So I don't know what's up with those comms. Kind of hard to tell where the snipers are positioned uh, in, in correlation to these guys. Wow, that was a powerful grenade. Just blew that Hesco up like it's a plastic container. I'm assuming that's a scav because he was like slick, no gear, nothing. All right, so these are the actual bad guys that are maneuvering on them right now all right so whoever this unit is that just rolled up on these guys behind the concrete pillars and and behind those concrete walls uh are de are definitely maneuvering on them so when we're leaving like a cover point to go to like a let's say another another cover point like cover point a to cover point b usually if we have more than a couple of people then we would probably use like a leapfrog system using meaning that you know, we'll have a couple guys establish a base of fire while another couple of guys move. And then once those guys are set, they establish a base of fire or cover fire. And then the other two or three or four move. You can do that to kind of also keep people's heads down 
while your guys are flanking or maneuvering around. Except these guys were shooting and moving at the same time, which is a viable option. But sometimes you have to ask yourself, what is the emphasis? Do I just need to move or do I need to shoot and move because I don't have a base of fire? But we'll see. Let's keep going. Yeah, the guys behind the concrete pillar has definitely got the upper hand. And this dude that's sitting behind this Mercedes or whatever it is, he's not sitting in a good position. Oftentimes in firefights when we would get shot at, it was always it was always get down and take cover and then assess the situation and then from there kind of establish comms and figure out well what is the plan? Because we're just kind of sitting here, they know where we're at and we don't necessarily know where all of them are at. So we gotta get eyes on. Who has the best eyes on? In that case, that is who established like a base of fire so that these guys behind the vehicles can get back somewhere or or fall back or move forward, but it's, it's got to be it's got to be something like that because if you're just pinned down and there's no kind of uh, no element that's coming to your support to establish kind of a support by fire, you're kind of screwed. As we can see here, these guys behind the vehicles are kind of screwed. I'm assuming I'm talking about the Russians right now. That's kind of that base of fire while the other one moves, and I guess they're trying to get inside this building where all their boys are. Yep, that's what he's doing. So these guys are kind of just pinned in the middle while we, he has his team inside that building and you got the other guys behind the concrete pillars there. That's kind of a tough shot if you're sitting there you lost your rifle. And you got to go to your secondary. I don't know if I would be taking these 30, 40 meter shots with my pistol from the prone, you know, laying down sideways from behind cover. I'd probably save that ammo and, and maybe make a better decision on if I can get to a place to get that rifle, maybe get another weapon and, and, and you know, get back to a primary because this pistol's not cutting it for this firefight. He's still messing with his pistol. There's got to be better communication. There's got to be more of a coordinated effort where his guys inside the building give him some really good cover fire, keeping heads down so that these guys can move. The guy with the pistol is just... I would probably send the guy with the pistol first. But now he's out there kind of... Oh, nope, he's in. He's in. All right, good. Oh, snap, RPG. Oh, look how slow it's moving. <laughs> Dude, did it really just skip off that dude's chest? Oh, my God, that was amazing. Dude, the cinematics and theatrics here are amazing. I love this. That RPG was sweet. Uh-oh. There's definitely a lot of times of confusion in firefights. There's just so much chaos happening that if you kind of lose track of your guys and you kind of lose track of that coordination, that communication, it can it can it can definitely hurt you. You can definitely have like blue on blue, you know, friendly shooting each other. So the, when it, when things are this chaotic, we definitely need to have our comms um, on T because it's otherwise it's. You know, there's room for mistakes. There's room for us to shoot our own people, especially with all the smoke and all the noise and everything. Why do they have tape over their battery compartments on their Peltors or Comtacks? Because what we would do is we would stick, we would take the Peltors, the outer shell off, and we would stick foam in there to dampen it and then we put the covers back on and it works really well so just a little tip for you guys for your for your Peltors and ear pro oh we're about to get in some cqb let's go hallway posture split stack usually works really well in hallway posture kind of cross coverage across the hallway see what you see open doors closed doors
One shot each, eh? Hallways suck, guys. Hallways are the worst place to be in CQB. We tell our students this all the time. You never want to stay in the hallway too long in CQB. It's a death trap. Bullets do skip down walls. The chances of you getting hit in a hallway are pretty great. I'm not quite sure why we're giving up real estate in this situation if they're trying to advance forward because now they're just stuck in this corridor. Snipers on the perimeters. It's pretty intense. CQB is always intense, guys. It's always chaotic because of the smoke, the noise, the, the confined spaces. It's always... It, it's always kind of a cluster when you when you think about you know kind of coordinating your efforts or who's where you know what the next step is and that's why it's it's you know you can't run in cqb you do have to sometimes be very deliberate until you get to a place where you can be a little more hasty or dynamic in this case these guys look like they're just stuck in these corridors and these stairwells and it looks like they're getting shot at from two different directions yep pull them back Good cover fire. Get him back. Get him out of that hallway. Is he? Wait. He's still in the hallway. Dude, you got to pull him all the way in. Into the room. He's just going to get shot up in his feet and legs. Man. Bravo, Foxtrot, bro. Blue Falcon. Oh, yep. See, he just got shot. We see this kind of stuff a lot in movies and in this case, in this film where, you know, things are so amped up that people are just like the same people are shooting at each other. And, and, and you know, they have to be like, hey, friendly, friendly, you know, eagle, eagle and, and don't shoot. There has to be, there's pro words for that. There's pro words, right? And, and there's sometimes there's other SOPs, hand and arm signals. Sometimes it could be chem lights if it's dark. There's all these kind of different ways that we can establish link ups, even in a chaotic situation like this, but it just comes down to the SOP of what the teams want to use and what they think best fits their, their, you know, their team's SOPs and, and, you know, whether that's hand and arm signals or what we call technical or non-technical, you know, uh, signals for linking up. That kind of, this kind of running backwards and shooting, it's not ideal, guys. That's why we say never move backwards in CQB. In CQB, you don't want to move backwards. If you have to move backwards, then just turn and run. Hopefully, there's somebody in front of you that's laying down, good suppressor fire, you know, so that you can just turn and run. Otherwise, you're going to have to, yeah, walk backwards and shoot because nobody has your back as you're, as you're trying to turn and move. But in CQB, you never walk backwards. At least you don't try to. That was a pretty intense CQB scene. Not gonna lie, that was pretty intense. Good shot. So far, so good on their movements. I mean, this kind of leaf frog tactic is very common. And it works very well as long as you're actually pulling security and scanning for those that maneuvering element. Captain Price? Like the Captain Price? Dead? Wait, so are these guys like SAS or just like SAS dudes that now are contractors? You sec. Oh man, it's about to get good. That dude has a shotgun. Stairwells are so hard to navigate sometimes, just depending on the layout. Especially when you have landings on each 
on each stairwell, like on each floor, when you have that landing and you have a door that's right at that landing, that's that can get very dangerous because you just don't know where that door is going to go or who's going to pop out from that from that landing. So it's it's always, and you still got to look up or down um, as you're going up and down these stairs. So it can be it can be tricky, it can be difficult. But one thing we say about stairways like this is we stay away from the railing. We kind of skirt the wall, especially when we get to those landings. Because sometimes, you know, you can kind of see up and down the stairs through that little opening. And you can see people coming up or people coming down. But it's also, that's where you get shot. So that's why we say stay away from the railings and start hugging the walls as you're getting to those landings and getting to that next set of stairs. I can't tell if these guys are British or American, the USEC guys. Maybe they're both. It is a private company. Oh. That's sketch. These lockers are sketch. They're not really cover, are they? Because the rounds will go right through it. He's shooting through the... Man, that's crazy. Oh. Speaking of the grenade going off, one thing that doesn't get talked about a lot is how concussive these kind of confined spaces can be for even like an AK, a short AK, you know, shorter barrel weapons are very concussive in, in CQB. Now, they all have ear pro on, but that kind of concuss that kind of reoccurring concussive force over and over again can definitely cause a lot of damage internal damage start getting headaches nausea or nausea you could definitely throw up it's not something you think about in the moment because you're just in it adrenaline's pumping you know you're on this kind of emotional roller coaster but like once things wear off you can definitely feel it ooh Right to the dome. Oh. Oh, they start, these USEC guys are starting to gain ground. Oh, no. That guy was playing possum. That was brave, dude. Or stupid. Jeez, that was intense. And these are okay. So these are the scabs. These are like the locals. I guess when you're outnumbered by a third party, it's a good time to join forces. That sounded like a dishka. Dishkas are badass. On one of my deployments in Afghanistan, we came up on a quad dishka. Quad dishka, guys. Four dishkas. They each had their own cans of ammo. But the way they were rigged up, all four of them shot at once. Unbelievable. To have that much 50 cal coming at you is insane. Obviously, it was like anti-aircraft, but... Imagine shooting that at people or a vehicle. Crazy. Man. Look at that. Some green nods. Oh, the clarity is terrible. Good enough to see. 
They're like some, they're like some 14 Bravo knockoffs. I'm not seeing Mike. Oh, it's all that. <laughs> oh, that guy's done. There he is. Pretty solid base defense plan. I mean, you got two towers. They look like they're fortified by steel plates. Look, Russian, no matter what happens next, I want you to okay, so this base belongs to Terra Group. The last time we were I'm assuming Terra Group when we the Nazis ass. has nothing to do with Yusek or Bear or the Scavs. So they're in fact the fourth party in this film. Got a couple machine gun nests. A lot of firepower to the front of that compound for sure. Seems too easy. Oh no. Oh. Is that is that, that dish gun again? Scabs don't got mortars. Okay, well, who is it then? I mean, if I was attacking a base, I would definitely prep it with mortars first. Uh, if I had mortars, I'd prep it that way. If I had, uh, you know, if I had any kind of assets, aviation assets on station, I prep it that way too. We're not just gonna take this base that looks heavily fortified with dishgas, you know, protecting their front lawn. That's just not gonna happen. So whoever's shooting the mortars here is doing it right. Oh my god. That was amazing. Who are these guys? Please tell me that's like some kind of C4 explosive in that backpack. Okay, clearly American, but who are they? Special Forces. Delta. Could be SEALs. Could be PJs. <laughs> Just joking. PJs don't do this. Oh my god, that di that dishka is so nasty, dude. I need a dishka protecting my front lawn. These are scabs. The scabs are attacking the base. The terror terror group. But who's leading them? Because those guys look and talk very special forces. Their weapons, all suppressed. They all have like panos. Man, they breached that wall. It's, I mean, I don't know what kind of numbers these scavs got, but this base is about to get overran. Oh my god, look at that thing. Oh, it's nasty. Oh my god, look at that. Oh my god, dude. What? Oh my god, did his head just explode? That was amazing. Sorry, I got a little excited there. I got a little excited, guys. Oh, dude, he's reloading that Dishka. Why does a Dishka just sound so much meaner than a Maudus? Than one of our 50 cows. Oh, was that a mortar? Now, realistically, whoever's shooting mortars into the base would probably stop shooting mortars once we made breach because you don't want to kill your own guys. And those mortars don't look very precise. So 
that part little kind of sketch shooting mortars once you, your guys made breach into the base i probably wouldn't do that and whoever that special forces team was they certainly probably would have called either a shift fire with the mortars or you know ceasefire oh who are these guys they got elk hands suppressed shorties they'll look like daniel defense 10 and a half uppers looks like a surefire can that looks like a raid x or an ingall i can't tell and then he has an elk can gross what kind of nozzles does he have i can't tell this guy They like they look, they got 31s. It looks like they have PVS 31s. Black Fox jackpot. Guys, what an epic film. That was so cool, man. I could watch that again and probably a couple more times just from all the action, the intensity, the firefights, the explosions. The way people were reacting to getting shot, the way they were showing the impacts on the walls, um, the, the, the realism. I mean, it was really well done. And I'm not quite sure if I was watching an actual movie or if this was some kind of animation. I still don't know that because I haven't dug into this. I just wanted to watch this for the first time and give my kind of give you guys my reactions and my, my first time kind of feedback on some of the tactics and military stuff. But man well done uh, again if you guys know then I, I need to look this up because like it's like is this like animated is it is it like is it cgi like or is it an actual film with a lot of cgi because i just don't know how they captured this if it's all real time or real uh real life action uh but amazing <laughs> amazing hopefully you guys enjoyed my commentary hopefully you guys enjoyed some of the feedback that i gave on the military side and uh I mean, this is kind of what I do for Hollywood anyway. I, I, you know, if you guys watch The Covenant, we, you know, this is pretty much what I did. I consulted for the movie. We changed up the lines. We changed up scenes. We changed up all kinds of stuff for that movie to make it as good as it was. And even then, you still have some of the Hollywood isms or that Hollywood dazzle because, well, you know, that makes things look cool. Sometimes realism doesn't look good on camera. So you kind of have to make it super dynamic and you kind of have to add those Hollywood theatrics to really kind of make it cool when you're watching on TV because, you know, uh, sometimes real tactics just look really slow and boring on camera. And I learned that by wa working on other projects. But this was, this was such a cool thing for me to do. I hope you guys enjoyed this. We should definitely do more of these. If you guys have other films, other shows, other video games, other, you know, these kind of movies, please put them down in the comment section because I, I want to do more of this. I enjoyed this. Um, and hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well uh, from you know everything that I showed you, but everything that we talked about really. All right, guys, that is it for me. Um, dude, I, I'm still kind of like pumped up from all the action and stuff. So now I gotta go like drink a tea or something to calm down. Anyway, as always, if you guys got comments, questions, concerns, anything, put them down in the comment section so we can like have a real cool discussion about this movie. Um, again, put your rec your recommendations down in the comment section for things that or stuff that you guys want me to watch and react to in the future. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on your notifications so you can see when we post videos like this. And don't forget to go on the 2Alpha Training Group and check out our schedule, check out the new merch, check out our products, as well as the courses for 2024. Sign up for the newsletter and we will see you guys next time. Cheers.